if you try to cut that off with a grinder, I don't think you'd be able to reuse this. But I think I can reuse that. You have to get welded here. But that's up to you. You can buy that part. I think it's like 80 bucks or 100 bucks. I don't want to buy it. I'm going to show you guys what I ended up having to do. My idea of grinding them flush and then hitting them off with a chisel did not work on the buckets. I ended up having to, well, I didn't have to, I just, I'm not drilling. What I did was I just cut it with a torch. And on the, on these brackets, it actually came out. Except for one, I'm soaking it in coil. But I'm gonna show you how I do it. This is something we do it on pipe flanges a lot. So it works really good. We I mean we do it on hundred old flanges and it works perfectly. So this is the this would be your frame. This is the frame of the truck. You can see where I cut it. You just take your oxyacetylene torch and get it hot like this with no with no oxygen and then hit the oxygen and just scrape that until it's nothing all the way down and then take your grinder and just grind you know grind it flush and then hit it out with the chisel so I'll do that and then I'll come back. So these are the axles after the paint. Uh, they turned out pretty good. I did uh, end up spraying over them with spray paint because I, I don't like the way rust or uh, POR 15 looks after the sun hits it or whatever. But and then on these parts here I obviously haven't painted the the track bar mount yet but I actually primered over the POR15 and then spray painted over that because these are the parts that are going to be exposed to the most sunlight and the most visible and I think they look pretty cool definitely not perfect but I was just looking for something I just wanted it to look good, not perfect, you know. But I'll paint I'm gonna paint this track bar red. 
I don't really like a whole lot of color underneath my trucks, but I think red would look good on just a couple parts. And then I'm gonna weld plates on the back of this. I'm not gonna film that. Uh, or I'll just show you when I do the front, but yeah. And then here's the parts I bought. This is a, a, a Bronco fuel tank. So it's a 38 gallon gas tank. And I paid, I think, $162 for that. These are the conversion U joints. There's the part numbers right there. I got both of those on Amazon. This is an F350 OBS Pitman arm. I got that from O'Reilly's. And I wish I would have just bought this from Blowing Diesel because it was only $15 cheaper and it's not reamed. So I'm going to have to ream that when I do the front. And these are uh, 2006 F350 front brake lines. And I got these from O'Reilly Auto Parts too. So, and then there's one more thing. This is the fitting that you will put here if you have a 2008. I don't know if it's the same for the other ones, but it, it could not be any easier if I could find the brake line right here. That fitting goes in there. You get the point. That fitting goes in there and then straight to the to the OBS. So you hardly have to do any type of uh, brake work to it. I did paint the calipers, but I did it pretty half-assed because I really don't care. I was going to buy new ones, but I figured why not just paint these, get me by. And I, I haven't bought a leveling kit yet. I want to see what it what it looks like. And then if I have to get a leveling kit, I'll, I'll do that. I figured I'd show you guys how to take the bed off if you don't know. I've done it uh, four times now. Oh. Uh, it's just going to be easier to <coughs> get to all this stuff with the bed off. And i got to put that Bronco uh, tank in. So I'll show you guys here. The bumpers are already off. And there's two bolts there. There's one there, one there. Those are the easiest ones. And then, however many, I think there's one, two, three, there's five, I think. Oh, I'm gonna have to take that toolbox off too, aren't I? Yep. Yeah. So I'll take that off too, but I'm just gonna go through with a uh, impact and a swivel. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but there's one there. You have to go up through the frame to get it with an extension. I think they're 18 millimeters. I got the back axle out. I did it with the leaf springs on, which was kind of a pain in the ass. So, what what I did was I, I took this e-brake off. 
sitting down there. I took this brake line off. You can see where it's dripping. And the shocks, and then literally just one, two bolts, that's it. Rolled the whole thing out. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind these rivets, and then I'm gonna chisel them out. I think, I think it'll go pretty good. And then I'm gonna pull a measurement from this frame here, from that point to that point, mark it out, and hopefully it's the same as the uh, blowing diesel, the way he did it. That's what I'm hoping for. Where like, I think this bolt ends up here, level it up, and I couldn't, obviously, have to drill this hole out to five eighths, and this hole out to five eighths to accept the bigger leaf springs. new shackle perches or whatever and I drilled these holes out so they can accept super duty size uh, bolts here now I'm doing the same thing on the perches I already drilled one pretty easy with this Perfect. <sighs> Yesterday I got all this painted I scratched it there but my frame has already been wire wheeled and painted uh, not that long ago so that's why it looks so good and it barely took me any effort but something I wanted to mention that uh, I don't think blow and diesel Joel mentioned is when you cut so you, you get take this perch it was originally bolted here and then when he did it, he was able to use this bolt, this hole, and just drill these. But what I didn't know is there's a notch right there. See that? So that's going to have to be like, I don't know, uh, you know, carved out to accept uh, the bolt. You see what I'm talking about? It's right there. That's that hole. So luckily for me, I have a square washer. I can put the head of the bolt here or whichever way, it doesn't matter. I can put a square washer on that that'll cover that. But that's something that you guys should think about if you're if you're if you don't have you know access to a square washer like that. And I did double check the measurement from that hole, so that hole is exactly 65 inches. So uh yeah, I don't, I don't know if every frame has that. Those, mine has it on both sides, but just something to think about. I'm gonna, I'll waller that out. Be like right here. I'll waller that out and then put a square washer on the back. I'd like to put my, the head of my bolts on the face because I just think it looks better, so. This is the hardware I ended up going with. I got it from Granger. Uh, I think they're, pretty big company you could probably get it from them too if they're local to you but I went with uh, black colored grade 8 uh, nylock nuts and then same thing for the for the uh, bolts these are fine thread half inch 
flanged bolts uh, inch and a quarter I got 25 inch and a quarter and then I got uh, 50 inch and a half I'm gonna use the inch and a quarter for the back and then uh, I'm planning on using the inch and a quarters for the bottoms of the buckets and then inch and a half every, everywhere else uh, I probably went a little overboard but I just I didn't want to run out and I didn't want to I mean if you buy them from like an auto parts store you'll probably spend double your money I mean, with all this was a hundred and fifty dollars that was extremely easy uh, and that might just be because I, I'm used to drilling stainless steel. I do that a lot at work. But I mean, I was in here for 20 minutes and it's done. Obviously that one's gonna need a washer. So I'll use inch and a quarter on all these and then an inch and a half on this one with a, with a square washer. Got the axles underneath it, uh, loosely bolted, except for these are torqued, uh, 90 pounds. These are loose. Sorry I didn't video it, I was kind of in a rush, but what I did was I put a floor jack here, jack that up, and then a uh, cherry picker with a strap here to pull this back slam that bolt in like I said it, I it probably wasn't such a great idea to leave the leaf springs attached but all right guys so uh, quick update on the truck I know I've been pretty bad at filming but I'll get better once I get this thing in my garage which I can do now I didn't film much but what I did was I took the rear tank out, put the drive shaft on using that conversion joint that I've already shown a picture of. It was, I think it was a Nibco was the brand. So this is a Super Duty flange. This is a factory OBS drive shaft. I did not, I didn't mess with this. All I did was push that U joint out with a ball joint press take this off the super duty drive shaft and then that conversion U joint just goes right in there and the reason why the gas tanks not in it is because I'm doing it in my garage like I said before I'm so tired of working out here and every time I need a tool I have to walk up those steps and into my garage next here there's that fitting I showed you a picture of in the, one of the earlier videos but that is off the Super Duty. I'm pretty sure it's the exact same as the uh, OBS. But yeah, you just take a hammer, hammer that out, fish the new Super Duty one in, and that's the all stock OBS. I mean, it wasn't really that hard. It's just my working conditions out here suck. So another thing is my shocks. My factory shocks are actually gonna work. I haven't tried them yet, but I measured them. And, and it's it's a straight shot. That's the bracket I welded on the garage just off measurements. It's a straight shot. And the angles are really close. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that, but I mean you can't even really tell I welded that on there. Alright guys, we're about to try to drive it for the first time. Got the wheels I'm gonna be running for a while on. Well the super duty shocks fit. They were slightly longer than the OBS. I think uh, with the truck all the way lifted up all the weight off the springs they were like uh, three or four inches longer which is like what you want split on looks really good they look identical uh, I half-assed bled the brakes I mean there's really no point in going all out I'm about brakes feel all right
moved. <laughs> 